This is a 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago. It's owned by YouTuber Tavarish, and I've come here to help him with the audio system in this car. Some say it's a million dollar show car. That's a million dollar show car. This actually is one of the cars from Fast and Furious 8. There were three of these cars used for the filming. This is the only survivor that is intact. It's a 6.2 liter V12 producing 571 horsepower. It's a little rough around the edges, but you can watch the restoration of this car on Tavares' YouTube channel, and that's in the description below. We can go from start to finish on this entire project, but I'm just here for the audio. So you'll see that on this channel. Let's take a look inside and see what we're working with. And here we have it with doors up. Movie cars are generally not in very great shape. Uh, from the outside, they're okay from about 50 feet, and on film they're okay, but they're usually pretty rough in person. The interior is no different. So we have a roll cage in here that actually goes through the back window uh, because that had to be done. So that's why the headliner's down there is the roll cage goes through the back window. The rest of the headliner's okay. Dash is okay, but we have a racing seat that was installed and the passenger seat is actually the driver's seat put on the other side. Uh, everything is a little bit wacky in here. Uh, a lot of things don't work. You have to start it from a button in the back. Over here in the engine bay, uh, the key will not come out of the ignition. Uh, the shifter has been welded back in there. Uh, it apparently broke at some point. So there's a lot of things that we've got to do here to make this right. Straighten out the wiring. Uh, under the hood, we don't have a lot of space. We'll show that in the build. But the sub is going to go behind the passenger seat here. So we've got some work to do back there. So you can see what we're working with is pretty rough. He's got a lot of work ahead of him, but we're gonna get the audio straightened out in this car as soon as possible. And this is all the equipment that we're gonna be using. All of this is available at emfcaraudio.com. We have an excess power battery that actually goes in the back of this car. Some of our swag six and a half inch coaxials. Sundown Audio RCAs, these are nine feet. 12 gauge speaker wire for the sub, 16 gauge speaker wire for the mids. We have a one aught amp kit. These includes all of your connectors, ring terminals, and everything that you need, as well as some wire ties. We have a uh, one aught wire for power and ground. Some RCAs. Uh, these are 17 feet, which is longer than we're going to need in this application, which is why we've got these nine foot. Fuse holder with fuse. Uh, we do have some speaker wire that is included with this, the remote wire. Uh, all this is in a nicely packaged kit. Works out very, very well. And the amplifier that we're using actually has four gauge inputs. This is a Sundown Audio SAX 200.4. Because this has four gauge inputs, we've got some adapters from Toolmaker to go from the uh, one aught size down to the four gauge size because those can go straight in here. Uh, the reason that we did this is the cleanliness of the wiring. Uh, going with all this wire directly from the battery directly into the amp, we don't have distribution blocks or any kind of splitting. We don't have a lot of room in this car, so all of that makes sense. And we have the Sundown Audio SD310. Very shallow mount. Works great uh, under seat applications, or in this case, behind the seat, like you might have in a full size truck. Uh, but that's where this is going to go, is behind the passenger seat. Now we're using this four channel also because it's very small, but because we have the six and a halves and the sub, those are the only things that we're trying to power here. So we're going to have 500 watts bridging the rear channels on the sub. And then we have uh, uh, all the rest of the power on the other front channels to go to the six and a halves. All of this is going to fit very well in this Lamborghini.
So after some time of taking the interior out, it actually took several hours because of the roll cage. That had to be cut out. We had a mountain point here and down here at the bottom. And the same on the other side, it came all the way up and over. There's a bar across the back. All that has been removed. That had to be cut out in pieces, taken a bunch of bolts, took a lot of time, got some things cleaned up. I've got a lot of wiring over here. All the uh, ECUs, relays, various things were tucked back in that corner, tied up in it. We've got all that taken out. Uh, we are not going to take the console out just yet. Uh, that will come out for some other things, but not necessary for the audio. Right here is where the sub is going to go. So we've got to measure this out, design up a box to go in there, and we'll build that here in a few minutes. But to really get a feel for everything that was taken out, we have this. We have one door panel out, the other one is still on the car, the floor mats, the seats, all of these panels, the CD changer, that is where the sub is going, everything we took out there, and then the roll cage. So this is what was on the inside. This came down, we had to make some cuts to get all that out. You have the base plates over there. That came out to the front. And this is the part that was hanging out in the engine bay in the back. So with all of this stuff removed, we now have the room to build what we need to build where we need to build it. And this is the front trunk, or frunk as we call it. Down here, we're gonna have the amplifier and uh, that's all that we should have to have up here. Uh, we actually do have quite a bit of space in this car. Uh, all of your more modern Lamborghinis, uh, once again, like from the Gallardo, you have far, far less space. Uh, so this one is a, a little bit of a treat where we can still have room to put things after the amplifier is in. Uh, there is an interior panel that goes right in there, but we don't have that at the moment. Uh, but the amp's gonna sit right down there. It'll be a nice, clean install and we have a lot to work with. Uh, we do have to run all the cabling to the head unit inside, which is just on the other side of this, but it has to be routed really funny to get there, and we've still got to sort that out. Uh, and then we have the battery that is behind these panels in front of the wheel. So that's buried down in there that we've got to run the power wire from down here all the way through the cabin and up to here.
Okay, so we've done a little bit more to the box here than we last showed. We got all the fiberglass uh, in that corner where we had the issue there. All that's sealed off. I made a trim panel that goes over the other side there, so it's going to be nice and flush uh, when all that gets covered up with the leather. I made a trim panel up top to conform to the factory curve there, and I flushed the sub. Now, there is no gasket on here right now. It is not going to have one. We're going to put a foam gasket under there, but a grill is going to get put on there as well. So that should sit and just come up here just a little bit so we can maximize our leg room in this automobile. And the sub will be protected. So there's the sub in its final state where it lives. We did run bolts through the bottom of the box, so it is nice and secure. It is not going anywhere in the massive acceleration and coring that this car can provide. Isn't that right, Freddie? Hey, car goes real fast. All right. All right. <laughs> so we've got the head unit in. Wire that up. Good to go. We do not have door panels, but we do have door speakers. So these do play. We got all this sorted out. So I'm going to go through what had to happen on the wiring of this beast because it was the most inconvenient vehicle I have ever wired in my life. As I mentioned before, the battery is back here. I totally meant to get a shot of that and everything had to be done when the wheel was off, but alas, I did not. So the wheel has to be off. We have an excess power battery buried way back there, about a foot and a half from this panel. Uh, we had to do some weird things with getting everything wired up. So it has one out wire. The positive terminal's on this side, the negative terminal's on this side. Battery goes this way. So the wire comes over here, hits the fuse holder. So we have to actually take the battery loose to slide it back to get to the fuse holder. It comes back out, loops around, and ends up here. This is in the back wall. We do have a grommet. You absolutely should use a grommet when going through metal. And a Wallace. And a Wallace, a, a uh, Wallace and grommet, if you were uh, British, perhaps. Uh, so comes out here conveniently goes down the side factory wiring follows right with it goes under these nice little tie downs here why that we happen to be so lucky i don't know but we were so then we come up through the dash goes around over and down near the clutch pedal goes through again we have another grommet no wallace that time then we come through here Pops out over by the brake booster. There's our power line. Goes into our adapters from Toolmaker into our Sundown Audio SAX 200.4. The ground wire comes up, loops around so we don't have any tension here, and bam, factory bolt into the aluminum frame. Back the bolt out, sanded it up, put the wire on, tightened it, done. Easiest wire in the entire car. Wire loom for all the speaker wires, all that kind of stuff goes over here. On this side, we have two sets of RCAs, one remote wire and one speaker wire for the sub. That is the 12 gauge wire coming through there. And then we have the speaker wire. This is where it gets interesting. Each side goes directly to the door from the amp right there. But how did we get there? We take the wheel off is how we get there. You have to take the wheel off Take the wheel arches out, and we have a little pathway that goes from over here, under there, buried in there. So I ran the wire through there and up to this hole. The other side actually has the, uh, the uh, whole harness. This one was missing that. The door has been replaced, which is why it's silver instead of yellow. Yellow was the original color of this car. This car was a two-tone. It was a, a two-tone left, it was yellow, and right was silver. Yeah, I think the Italians got that wrong oh, when they were doing that. You're saying that's not that's not factory? Um, we'll call that IDM, Italian Domestic Market. Okay, great. So, as you can see here, this is where the wire comes up on this side. Tucked nicely through all this factory wire. It goes over the hinge and over to the side. It was a huge pain. And we actually had to take wheels off to run wires. So, that was fun. So here is our very still kind of apart interior, but everything does in fact play. So it's not gonna sound the best because we're going through mics and it's hard to perceive it, 
but we are going to turn this on so you can kind of hear what is going on here with royalty free music so without further ado we have beeping lamborghini dash and freddy's gonna play some stuff on his phone that youtube will not hate on hopefully who knows hopefully you know there, there could always be that chance there's always the chance there's always a chance So that's not too shabby for one four channel amplifier that's pretty small and three speakers. That is two six and a half inch mid ranges and one 10 inch shallow mount subwoofer that's 500 RMS in a small sealed box that will end up behind the seat. You should definitely hear this thing outside. It sounds incredible and we're not done yet. All right, so it is after midnight the amp is not mounted. We're not going to do that just yet. All this stuff upholstery wise is going to be redone. So that's going to be the last thing there. Door panels also going to get redone. Those will get put in. That'll be great. We can tune it after that fact. But now you have seen the entire installation process of a Lamborghini Murcielago. 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 The 6.2 liter V12 of Fury is not the best sounding thing in this car right now. After the exhaust get changed, we'll kind of see how that goes. It is in fact the stereo. You've seen the entire process. As far as I know, nobody's documented that before. This one is also special because it was from Fast and Furious and they did lots of wacky things to this car that made things extra difficult. We had to remove the roll cage. We had to deal with kind of janky wiring. We had to deal with missing harnesses, taking wheels off to do everything but you have seen the entire process. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate any comments that are left because they're generally pretty good. So if you have any questions about this, I give you any specifics, we can do that. And uh, make sure you hit up emfcaraudio.com. Everything we've used in this build is available on the website. We have free shipping on everything in the continental US. When you go to check out, it might say calculated in cart, but when you get there, you can get faster shipping options if you want, or just pick free shipping. We also have hats, shirts, lanyards, beanies, koozies, I think still. Do you have and Lamborghinis? We don't have any Lamborghinis on the site. You get one. Everybody should have a Lamborghini. <laughs> I have one McLaren, Lamborghini's on my list. Maybe I'll pick up one of these beauties. We'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, you should subscribe to his channel. Yes. That link will be below. And there's also the Wrench Everyday podcast that he does with a friend of his, Andrew Howell. It is a good time to watch that as well. So make sure you check out Tavarish. Check out the Wrench Everyday podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Check out all the links below for all of the stuff that's happening in this car. And I'll see you in another video later.